In the Havana neighborhood of Vedado, 30 people live in this once posh two-story house. It's literally falling to pieces. This resident tells me his mother was killed when one of these wooden beams fell on top of her. They let me take a quick look inside, where the makeshift staircase feels equally unstable. I've been living here since 1994, trying to get a proper dwelling, but there's nothing. Everywhere you look, homes built before the 1959 revolution are collapsing. Yet simultaneously, a construction boom is underway, not for public housing, but for hotels. Last year, eight enormous new hotels were inaugurated. Another five will be opened by December, and more will follow. The majority are owned and financed by Gaesa, the Cuban military's tourism company that owns 76% of five-star hotels and the majority of the rest. All this while Cuba's so-called economic engine continues to stall, as evidenced by these exquisite old convertibles standing idle in old Havana for lack of foreign tourists. For a modest fee, we are taken for a spin by Eric, who explains that millions of Cubans depend on tourism. It's a chain. If I work, I spend money, and others make money, and so on and so forth. It's what makes the economy run. The prohibition of cruise ships imposed by Donald Trump has impacted us a lot, like his other sanctions. In the last six months, only 28% of Cuba's hotel rooms have been occupied. And U.S. sanctions aren't the only reason. Officials concede that shortages or poor quality of food, fuel, transportation and entertainment are also discouraging visitors. During the so-called golden years when President Barack Obama was in office, this whole area was absolutely full. Now, as you can see, the streets are empty, there are no tourists almost anywhere. So the big question is, why are they building so many new hotels? One clue is that while emblematic structures like the Art Deco Riviera Hotel remain closed, new hotels are being built with government money on property not being claimed in U.S. courts by their pre-revolution owners. Many speculate that should Cuba's one-party state system eventually change, they could then be bought and sold. Industry officials insist they're simply preparing for a tourism boom, comparable to Cuba's pre-revolution days a feat that will take more than just new hotels. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Havana. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.